Today, how something called bias for action tempts us to make foolish decisions after a money loss. Hi, I'm Graham Newell, and I use the latest neuroscience insights to show you how to make smarter money decisions. My speeches and webinars teach how to recognize the signs that an impulsive decision might be likely. Click on subscribe and the bell below to see more of my videos. I don't know about you, but after I've had a setback, I always feel a little less anxious if I can take some action to make the situation better. Doing even a little thing makes me feel like I'm more in control. But there's a real downside to this activity. It's a cognitive bias that brain scientists call bias for action. It's a compulsion to do things whether it's a good idea or not. It's what entices scared parents to undertake sketchy medical treatments even when doctors recommend patients. Bias for action is the reason coaches will sometimes double down on more training after a loss. Maybe what the players need is rest time and a chance to refocus, but the coach schedules another grueling workout because it just feels like that sweat and toil is accomplishing something. Brain research shows that most of us feel less regret if we take action and lose than if we do nothing and lose. Passively losing just feels like a cop-out. So when are we most vulnerable to falling for bias for action? Be on guard when you're in these situations. Number one, you're doing something for others. When a competitor launches a successful new product and your agitated boss asks, what are we going to do about this? The temptation is to immediately spring into action. Number two, when the stakes are high, fear of failure can cause us to panic. Doing something distracts us from that uncomfortable feeling. And number three, when you failed before. When our personal reputation is on the line, acting decisively makes us feel bold and powerful, even if we're doing the wrong thing. Research shows that bias for action does its most profound harm in the world of finance. It powerfully compels foolish choices after a financial setback. Markets take a dive, and our knee-jerk reaction is to do something. But maybe the best course of action is to do nothing. Bias for action tempts us to make desperate moves when there may be few opportunities for a win. Research shows that investors attempting to time the market earn an average of 4% less every year. That means that if they invest $10,000 for 20 years, they'll lose a whopping $25,000 over the life of the investment. So how can you tell if your actions are smart damage control or they're just needless tampering? Look for these three signs. There's constant churn in your portfolio. Sure, this can be exciting, but it's rarely lucrative. Number two, constantly checking your balances. Experts recommend checking in every few weeks, or even better, once a month. And number three, hypersensitivity to short-term losses. This often leads to taking corrective measures, and research shows that eight times out of 10, this leads to a loss. So after experiencing a setback, pause. And ask yourself, is this a smart repair tactic, or am I making a needless move as a distraction to the pain of the loss? The key is to work out an action plan for failure now, before you have that failure. Build two plans ahead of time, one if your plan works and another if it fails. Then don't let bias for action get you off track. If you'd like to see more videos on bias for action, click on this box to see the full playlist. And if you'd like to learn more about how brain science can help you make smarter money choices, click the subscribe and the alert bell below. I'm Graham Newell, and that's Better Decisions Through Brain Science.